Hello everyone, it's Mark Chalero, the owner of MS Classic Cars, and today I'm coming right back at you with another spectacular car. This isn't just another car from MS Classic Cars, this is one of my top 10 favorite vehicles in MS Classic Cars history, which says a lot. Today I'm presenting you a 1937 Chevrolet Business Coupe that's packing a Don Hardy LS3 636 horsepower engine that's coupled to a Tremec T56 Magnum 6B transmission, and it sits on a Street Rod Garage custom chassis. You gotta check this thing out. To start off this uh, video here, uh, this is a non-rehearsed video. I am going to be referencing my notes throughout the presentation to make sure I cover as much as I possibly can. I will forget or not mention certain things, so please visit our website at msclassiccars.com for a full description. We also have over 150 highly detailed vehicle photos, so you can check out every square inch of this amazing car. Also, uh, if you have or have not been following MS Classic Cars, please note that I only collect number one, number two condition vehicles. We've been doing that since inception. We are the only classic car dealership in the country who services everything that we sell. We document that work with an invoice that we picture within the photo gallery. Once the cars are done through the service process, we bring them into our detail center and we detail them to the highest possible level and then of course we do these amazing presentations once the vehicle is sold i personally will handle all the paperwork make sure that the transaction is very simple i will even set up the enclosed transportation once the vehicle goes inside the enclosed trailer we cover it with plastic we take pictures so the vehicle arrives to your doorstep just like it was here in the showroom. Once you get the vehicle, do your own thorough inspection. I stand behind every car that I sell. And again, please do your homework on MS Classic Cars and you will see what we're all about. So let's uh, kind of talk uh, a little bit about my opening statement with this particular vehicle. I had said it was a top 10 favorite. Let's kind of analyze that for a moment. Uh, I have not said that about a vehicle in quite some time. It means a lot. We have sold over 700 vehicles over the years throughout the MS Classic Cars collection. They can all be referenced on my sold page, again, at msclassiccars.com. Make sure to check them out. We have owned not only some of the best factory correct concourse cars, but we've also owned some of the best custom cars. Uh, just to throw out a few names, we have owned multiple vehicles by Ring Brothers, uh, great builders in the industry. We've had some vehicles by Dave Kingdig, uh, Kingdig Design. We've had cars by the Custom Shop. We've had cars by Rad Rods by Troy. Uh, Goosley Customs, which by the way is doing a vehicle for us as we speak. Uh, it just goes on and on. So we have had 
some of the best custom cars in the world that we're very proud of. So please understand when I say something, uh, we have uh, had some of the best that I'm comparing it to. So it's a very, uh, very important thing when I say that this vehicle is a top 10 favorite of mine. So let's get into uh, the story quick about this vehicle. I am gonna read this paragraph, which can be referenced on our website. Uh, so again, it's just kind of the story, and then I'm gonna get into um, all of the details. Normally what I do with our videos is I will sit inside the car, kind of go over the exterior, the interior, the trunk compartment, the engine compartment, the undercarriage. Today what I'm gonna do um, is I'm actually gonna do all of that walking around the vehicle from the outside. And then once we're finished with that, then I'll get back into the vehicle, I'll start it up, I'll let you listen to how beautiful it runs and we'll take it from there. Uh, so here's, here's the deal. Um, let's, let's back up to the point where this vehicle came off the trailer uh, after I had purchased it and we'll put ourselves in that situation as we speak. So a uh, car gets dropped over uh, at my service department. Um, my head uh, shop foreman, uh, service manager, Michael Marcella calls me, uh, says that we're gonna kind of do a quick shakedown on the 37 Chevy, uh, says the car is absolutely spectacular. I'm gonna fall in love with it. So he brings it over. I uh, said, let's take it for a ride. What we like to do at the dealership is we like to do our initial quick inspection of a vehicle. Uh, we're talking about, you know, checking everything on the outside, checking in everything in the inside, kind of making our list. Uh, he says, you got to drive this thing. I, I started it up. I immediately knew uh, we had something special just from the exterior, of course, the interior, the quality, the way everything felt. It's just uh, hard to explain, but certain cars just are at a very, very high level. Once uh, you start driving these cars, you start to realize, you know, what they are and uh, older technology and things like this. And we try to make them as good as we possibly can. But the minute that I started driving this thing down the road, I looked over at Mike and I said, this has got to be one of the best running and driving vehicles that we've ever had in MS Classic cars. Uh, the tires weren't rubbing, it was steering awesome, the clutch felt really good, it was shifting through all the gears, it had tons of power. We crept through like a neighborhood. Uh, again, I was revving it up, everybody was giving us thumbs up. It was just such a great experience that when I got back to the dealership, we're, again, we're not even close to getting this thing through service and detail and presenting it here today. This is way back in the beginning. I immediately called uh, the gentleman that I bought it from, told him how happy I was with the car, and I got the information of the company who built it. I immediately reached out to them. I actually uh, complimented them, again, on how great of a job that they did. They knew um, who we were and what we've done over the, the years with collector cars and custom cars, and they really uh, hit a sweet spot with them to uh, hear how satisfied we were with the car. So that's kind of the story. Uh, so nothing I'm saying today is made up. It's all factual. This car is the real deal. So let's get into uh, the paragraph I told you I was going to read. From the information gathered, uh, this vehicle was born as a 1937 Chevrolet Business Coupe with the Master Deluxe trim. I did my own research, uh, which is included in this brand new binder, which I'm going to show here in a minute. In 2011, it was discovered for sale in California by a gentleman named Hank Miller, who resides in Texas. A copy of the California title, which is included in this binder, which I'll show in a minute as well, shows that the vehicle was sold brand new in 36 as a 37, where it spent all of its life until Hank's acquisition. He purchased this hard to find vehicle because it was solid and retained all the original sheet metal. We all know how iconic the 37 Chevy is uh, with this great, amazing body style. And to find one that's original, that retains all of its original sheet metal is very, very difficult. Uh, so again, that's what his, his search was for and what he found. His intention was to build a modern day version of an iconic American automobile. He collaborated with Killer Hot Rods and Customs located in Texas to bring his vision to life. The build started in 2012 and was completed in 2017. Countless hours and dollars were invested in what became a five-year meticulous restoration. Once the build was completed, Hank enjoyed the vehicle, including taking it to multiple car shows where it received great press. 
In July of 2018, with just 500 miles on the odometer, he sold the car to a gentleman named Richard Swartz, who resides in New Jersey. At the time of the purchase, the vehicle was powered by a uh, speeding built uh, 572 V8 engine that was rated at 700 horsepower. Richard uh, enjoyed the vehicle for a few years, just adding a few hundred miles. Richard's a collector. He's got multiple cars. This was just a real prized uh, possession within his collection. Uh, so he only really drove it a few hundred miles. Both Hank uh, and Richard agreed that the 572 engine was just too much engine for this vehicle, especially with a 950 CFM quick fuel carburetor. Richard made the decision that he wanted to upgrade to a modern engine that would be a lot more user friendly. Uh, so in mid 2020, he contacted Nick Ryan, the owner of Killer Hot Rods and Customs, to send the vehicle back for another transformation. Some of the new upgrades included all new American auto wiring, tires, uh, painting some of the interior pieces, trunk uh, area pieces, trunk shocks, uh, the LS3 engine, the fuel system, cooling system, the clutch, the brake components, the suspension components, etc. These upgrades with parts and labor exceeded well, well over 50, probably 60, $70,000 just in the upgrades of what was done. The transformation was completed in 2021. The current odometer currently logged is 1,127. Richard decided to sell the car uh, because he just wasn't using it enough uh, as what he originally intended to. Again, he's got a lot of vehicles, uh, drives some of his more modern cars frequently and decided he wanted to sell it. So he never actually listed it for sale. Um, he actually has been following MS Classic Cars for quite some time now. He contacted me to see if I was interested in buying it. Of course, I jumped on the opportunity, and here it is today. So that's kind of the story of the vehicle. So let's quickly go over this binder here. I do create a brand new binder for every vehicle. Uh, you will see here, these are the two awards that I was referencing earlier. These are Good Guys Awards, MS Classic Cars is a member of Good Guys. We've been a member for many, many years. I'd uh, like to give Good Guys a shout out. They're a great organization. Again, this vehicle was a Builder's Choice Top 10 Award winner in 2017 and in 2018. Keep in mind, that's when the car had the 572. I could only imagine what it would accomplish today with its new engine and components that were added. The first and foremost thing that we have in every binder that we have is the invoice. I mentioned to you earlier that we service every vehicle we sell. It's not lip service, it's documented with this invoice. It clearly shows you, you can see this in our photo gallery, what we did. We invested almost $5,000 in this vehicle. Uh, this is just a printout of some of the options and so forth the vehicle has. These are the uh, receipts from Don Hardy the engine builder, uh, this is a dyno sheet. One thing that people can do is they can talk horsepower so they're blue in the face, but you don't really know what something's producing unless you have a dyno sheet. This vehicle has a dyno sheet. It will show here that it has 636 horsepower at 6,500 RPM. So that's included. All the engine build information is included here, plaques, warranty cards, all the internals. You can again see all that on our website. This is some information that I pulled off the internet regarding the 37 Chevy uh, business coupes, all the variations in different models, production numbers, etc. I had mentioned to you earlier about the California title that I was going to reference. Here it is right here. It shows when the vehicle was actually sold, 1936. Again, this is when uh, this car was purchased in California uh, by Hank Miller. Uh, this is actually a picture in a website, a Hot Rod Hotline, that shows the vehicle at Good Guys. It just basically says that it's a Good Guys winner. Goes into some of the details. They were really, really impressed with it. Again, I included that. Uh, there's some more uh, information here as well regarding the car. And then what I do with every vehicle that we sell is I put everything in date order right down to the exact day, year, etc. Then I cover them with these plastic sleeves. So the new owner uh, has nothing to deal with regarding any organization. Everything is ready to rock and roll. So that is obviously included. And last but not least, we have two additional items here. 
As I mentioned uh, earlier, this vehicle was featured not only on the cover of Modern Rotting Magazine, this is a great magazine if you haven't heard of it, uh, but it was also a pretty uh, featured deal inside here. Uh, you can see, again, all these pictures will be inside of our photo gallery, but they did a beautiful spread on this. Uh, again, second page spread is here. Some amazing uh, pictures and photography and so forth. So we have Again, all these pages that clearly show the vehicle in its full form. And we not just have one magazine that's included, we actually have four copies that are all included with it. Uh, and last but not least, we have a show board here as well that is included um, with the car. So again, all of this will be kept inside the vehicle. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get out now. We're gonna do a complete presentation, as I mentioned. We're gonna kind of talk about the vehicle. I'll make my way to the interior, the engine bay, trunk compartment, etc. When I'm done with the presentation, I'll get back in it. I'll go ahead and start it, let, listen how beautiful it runs. I can't wait to show you this amazing ride. Let's do it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a full walk around presentation of this amazing 37 Chevrolet business coupe that I have kind of nicknamed the killer hot rod based on who built it and how amazing it looks. If you step back for a second and just look at this vehicle, it is absolutely pure Americana. It's got amazing body lines. It is just a super, super sexy vehicle. And it really has that gangster look, if you will, from the later 1930s. Uh, I am gonna reference some of my notes uh, as we walk around this to make sure that I pinpoint as many things as possible. You will also see that I have this snap-on flashlight. The point of this flashlight is I am going to point out uh, anything that I see that would be considered an imperfection, even if it's as tiny as a pin size chip. This vehicle is virtually flawless, so I'm gonna search very hard for an imperfection. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do as we make our way around the vehicle. So let's first start off um, by saying that during the build, the floor, the trunk floor, the tunnel, the rear wheel wells, the bottom rear panel trunk were fabricated to accommodate the custom street rod chassis, uh, which was powder coated satin black. The bumpers were also removed and all of the holes were smoothed over. The original steel body is extremely straight with excellent gaps. So let's back up for one second and let's take a look at how amazing this stance is. This does not sit on air ride, okay? This vehicle sits on the custom chassis with coilovers that have been adjusted. You would think that it would rub uh, when you turn the wheels, uh, maybe when you hit bumps on the road, it absolutely does not. It is amazing to get a vehicle to actually ride nice, handle nice, and do everything it's supposed to do when you get this look. This is a million dollar look that this vehicle has. Again, I can't say enough about it. When we talk about the body, again, it's all steel, okay? This is all the original sheet metal. This is not a vehicle that went through a ton of sheet metal replacement. It's all original, okay? We're going back to 1937, think about that. The only thing that was added uh, that was not original were the running boards that you see. But I cannot explain in words how laser straight this body is. Looking at the beautiful roof line, looking at this whole hood area, down to these buckets for the headlights, the fenders, the doors. When I look down the side of it, it is absolutely laser straight. I'm also gonna point out some of the gaps that the vehicle has as well. So let's first uh, start talking about the split hood here. This is a very unique design. It actually opens up, I guess like a, like a like wings would open up. Uh, it actually looks amazing. So you can see the engine from both sides. I'm gonna demonstrate that in a minute. Why we're on the subject of the hood, I am gonna just put my flashlight over this and tell you if I see anything that's even pin size, whether it be a scratch, chip, etc. there is nothing here to mention whatsoever. The bright work is absolutely beautiful. The hood ornament, this grill here is in beautiful condition. I know this grill was replaced uh, brand new uh, during the restoration 
uh, period. It's an Illuminacraft grill is what they refer to it as. Um, obviously, everything that you see on this vehicle has been restored or replaced in brand new condition. One thing that I like about the front here, uh, you will see it has original style Chevrolet stamped headlight uh, covers there. I thought that was a pretty cool touch, but typically in the front of a vehicle is where you find all of its imperfections from road rash and things like that. This is near flawless. I don't see anything here that's worth mentioning on either side. It's in absolutely beautiful condition. So what we can do is kind of make our way over to the uh, driver's side front fender. Again, it's in absolutely beautiful condition. I do see a little, little tiny imperfection. Again, very, very, very small. Virtually unnoticeable unless you put a flashlight over it and really get up close and stare at it. Um, but again, it's in absolutely spectacular condition. Let's look at these body lines too. Look at these body lines, look at the gaps. The amount of time that went into this, look, look at this, how everything lines up, how tight all of this is, all the seals, the glass is brand spanking new in the front. These windshield wipers do work. Um, it's just absolutely beautiful. Uh, again, this front fender is in great condition here. You can see that every single bolt is Allen faced. Beautiful condition. Again, look at how tight all this fits. Look at these door gaps. Just amazing. It really is. On the subject of the front, let's touch base on these wheels. These are actually uh, a one of a kind. They're very expensive. Circle racing billet aluminum wheels that were powder coated. They have this custom Chevy cap here in the center. The wheels are 18 by eight in the front with Continental Extreme Contact tires. They're 225, 45, 18 tires. These were brand new. Uh, they were replaced when the vehicle went back the second time. Uh, again, this is just an absolutely killer look for this ride. Uh, again, see how nice these running boards meet up with these fenders. Nice and smooth under here. Again, just absolutely beautiful. On the subject of the engine compartment, one thing about these, they can be very temperamental, these hot rods, uh, d depending on what make, model it is. Again, this is all steel. Look at how nice this opens up. It lifts. This just connects here like so. And look at how nice I just opened that. And why we're on the subject, look at underneath how everything was done. Everything was done so tastefully. This is kind of like a matte finish. And that matte finish is reflective of the matte finish that you see on that Don Hardy LS3 motor. You can see where the actual block, you can see where the fuel rails, everything is kind of a matte finish that matches, but then they actually painted the valve covers the same color as the exterior, which is called Olive Grab. That's the name of this color. And Hank Miller told me he was in the Army. I think it was for almost 40 years. Uh, we appreciate his service. He said that he wanted uh, to make it a color that would remind him of his years in the Army. And he also uh, wanted to resemble a Harley Davidson motorcycle color from the 1930s. Uh, at MS Classic Cars, we've had some spectacular Harley Davidsons and Indians and things like that. So when he said that, kind of touched a soft spot with me as well. But check this out one more time. Look at this, this engine bay here. It is absolutely spectacular. I'm just gonna reference a couple of my notes here on this engine, just so we kind of cover this here. The firewall and the inner fenders, again, were all painted body color. Look at how beautiful all this work was in here, the way that they did everything. Um, again, it's been updated with American Auto Wiring. Um, again, this motor has 636 horsepower. Um, it was outfitted with a Holly Terminator X engine management system, Holly EFI fuel rails, Russell Performance, uh, uh, 6AN hose fittings, and Concept One pulley system. That pulley system is black. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, the engine runs super smooth. It sounds awesome. It breathes through these really nice hooker headers 
into a three inch custom exhaust system with MagnaFlow mufflers, I will note that the exhaust system on this vehicle has been completely ceramic coated all the way to the back. They did a beautiful job on the exhaust system. Uh, one thing I will also mention is the engine. Uh, you can actually see from this angle here is cooled uh, by an aluminum radiator with a uh, spiral fan. The engine is coupled again to the Tremec T56 Magnum six speed that really shifts nice through all the gears. And it does have an RST stage two twin disc clutch, which is very easy to operate. That was done when the car got sent back the second time. Uh, so what we'll do is when I open up the other side of the engine compartment, we'll touch base on a few more of those things, but I just wanted to make sure I covered as much as possible. You'll see how this goes into this nice little clip. And then this just folds right down. Check this out. That's all there is to it. You can't make that up. Look at how beautiful it fits. Look how quickly I opened it, how quickly I closed it. Anybody that knows anything about hot rods, not always the case, especially when you have the split style hood. So making our way over to the roof, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this roof is absolutely gorgeous. It's free of any imperfections to speak of. I mean, it is beautiful. Look at these lines. Look at this body line here how gorgeous it is. Look how tight the door fits. It's got these nice little wings over this glass here, which by the way, this does work. It does open these little vent windows here. It's a little easier to do it from the inside, but you can see how nicely that opens and closes nice and tight. It's got this billet style, nice mirror on here. Again, this door, it's got an original style door handle on here. Look at these gaps. Look at these body lines. Absolutely gorgeous. And you know, if you follow these all steel late thirties vehicles, they were not gapped very nice. So it took tons and tons of time, hours, labor to make it look like it does today. Now look at how nice this opens and closes. Look, look at this. Absolutely beautiful. When we open up the door, what I like about it is it has a huge entry. You really have a lot of room here to enter the cabin. Again, this back window here is super, super sexy. Got that real nice sporty gangster look, if you will. But look at everything in this door jam. Look at how beautiful of a job they did in here. The striker, I mean, just look at this. The body work is second to none. Again, we've owned some of the best classic cars in the country. This is clearly one of the best, if not the best overall car we've owned. Uh, really comparing it to looks, performance, drivability, et cetera. Now, I'm six foot, 200 pounds. Check this out. Get inside the vehicle, okay? Look at how much room I actually have inside this vehicle. I actually have plenty of room. These seats are fully adjustable seats. They go back quite a bit. Matter of fact, probably too far than what I actually want. So that's a really nice feature and I have a ton of headroom in here. So if you're somebody who is larger uh, and you're concerned about space, there's no concern. This is super comfortable. And although these seats are bomber style seats from Speedway, they look tight. Look at how much room I have on both sides. Okay, there's a lot of room in here. Um, so again, absolutely spectacular. So let's talk a little bit about the interior. Um, I am going to reference my notes here because I want to make sure I give a shout out to the company who did the interior. It was fully um, customized and designed by a company called Delgado's Upholstery and Tr Trim Shop. They're located in Texas as well. They did an absolutely amazing job with this interior. I think it was dead on, perfect to the exterior, complements it amazingly. Um, so let's go over kind of some of the things they did. They covered the interior with Restomod air sound deadening to keep it cool from uh, and quiet from road noise. The entire cabin was stripped obviously to bare metal. Then they covered everything and so forth. We have pictures of that within our photo gallery. The uh, dash and trim was all painted the same color olive drab as the exterior. They did a beautiful job with that. 
Um, the saddle colored synthetic leather upholstery includes the headliner. I do have to tell you this headliner is absolutely amazing. I love the extra stitching that they did around all of these pieces here. It's just the little stuff that they did around the sun visors that just makes the difference. This really nostalgic style dome light, which is in working order. All of this here is just absolutely beautiful. It smells nice in here. The sun visors are super thick. Again, all the trim was also painted olive grab as well. I'm referring to the back window, side windows, you know, et cetera, et cetera, but just an amazing job. Um, it's equipped again with Speedway bomber seats that were fabricated again to slide back and forth. That was a really nice thing that they did. A lot of times with these seats, you'll find in these hot rods, they're stationary. They kind of set them up where they're in the middle so they don't really move. I thought that was a great idea, making them move back and forth. Um, some of the custom features inside here, they include the plastic instrument gauges. These are really nostalgic style gauges. You can see where the turn signals have been incorporated up here. Again, this was all painted body color. Uh, they did a great job with that. I love the trim, how everything matches around all the components and so forth. So let's talk a little bit about the features here. And again, I'm referencing my notes because I just don't want to forget some of the important features. It has a Lime Works steering column. That's this here, which is this beautiful uh, polished billet aluminum uh, steering column. It's a big name in the business. It's got the drop and turn signal control, which is this unit here with this real nostalgic looking lever, which I think is really cool. Um, it also has the SoCal steering wheel that they, of course, wrapped in the same material as the rest of the interior. And here's one of my favorite parts. It has the old air AC system controls. So where do they put the AC controls? They put it inside the glove box, which is a locking glove box. And check this out. Not only is it painted inside here, but look at how beautiful they laid out all of this inside the glove box. We're talking about the air conditioning unit, some of the features here for the radio, the screen. They even have this little uh, piece here that would be used to control the controller for the fuel uh, injection management system. Look at how nicely this thing closes. Again, I pay attention to the fit and finish. Look inside these door jams, how all of these bolts here are all stainless and polished. Look at every Allen bolt. Remember I showed you on the exterior, the hood, they use the same style bolts on the inside of the doors. These rollers here for the vent window, for the window, for the door handle, they all match the trim work. That's, I mean, it's just so much time went into this uh, restoration. I can't say enough about it. Uh, so wrapping up the interior here, um, I did want to make a couple more uh, mentions. It does have the retro sound Bluetooth radio, which I just showed you. It has four infinity speakers. Uh, which basically are located throughout the interior. Um, the shifter uh, with the black knob is really nice. Notice where you're sitting in the vehicle and where the steering wheel is and where the shifter is. The shifter is at a, such a cool location. Sometimes shifters can be too forward, they can be too backward, they can be very awkward. What I love about this machine here is I love where the shifter is actually located. I found that really nice when I was driving it. Um, so again, they did a great job with all that. And it also has a low car emergency brake lever, which is right in the center here. You can totally see these custom Willwood pedals. Uh, they've got this custom uh, rug here which is absolutely beautiful. The carpeting, the floor mats, everything matches. Even this uh, piece that the seat belts are actually connected to was painted the same color. The seats were painted the same color. They were trimmed with the same interior. And there's a lot of space in the back of this vehicle as well. You can throw uh, chairs for a car show back there. You can put a cooler back there. Whatever it is that you want to do in the back, it has a lot of space in the back. So we'll keep making our way around uh, the exterior here. But that covers a lot of the interior. Again, I really can't say enough about it. It is super, super nice. Oh, the other thing I wanted to show you here is these windows, okay? Check this out. Nice and tight. Super, super tight, all brand new glass, crystal clear, slightly tinted. See how nice that rolls up and down? I know it sounds simple, but you would be surprised if you haven't owned a classic car, especially one from the 1930s or 40s. It's not an easy task to have the windows roll up and down easily. They bounce back and forth inside the door. They leak, etc. This one is super tight. Again, 
Look at how nice this thing shuts. As I make my way around uh, the rear quarter here, this whole area, you will see that it's in flawless condition. The rear fender here is absolutely beautiful. There's not one scratch. There's not one ding, nothing to speak of. Again, look at this, absolutely spectacular. Here is another impressive part. Uh, we have the same style wheel as I mentioned in the front. Again, they're circle racing billet aluminum wheels that were powder coated black. They got this custom Chevrolet center cap. These wheels are 20 inch wheels. They're 12 inches wide. Again, they've got one of my favorite con uh, tires, Continental Extreme Contacts. They're 295, 45, 20s in the back. Absolutely spectacular. And again, those are brand new. Everything is super smooth. There's no rough edges here. Again, beautiful. Making our way into the rear. Again, get my flashlight out here. What I'm looking for again with this flashlight is I'm looking for imperfections. Really nothing at all to speak of. The paint on this is beautiful. Keep in mind that this vehicle is even nicer outside than it is inside. My showroom lights are not forgiving, especially when I put a flashlight on it. If it looks good under this test, you can only imagine what it looks like outside. Let's focus on this gap line. Look at this. Look at this gap. It just sits so beautifully. It's got these original style taillights that were painted. Obviously brand new bezels, brand new taillight lenses, license plate holder. Now check this out. This is a treat. Look at how nice this opens and you will notice this opens on struts. Unlike a lot that have the mechanisms that are similar to the hoods, these open on struts. When we make our way down inside here, you can see they brought all this gorgeous upholstery into the inside. This is kind of a stair step design here which looks absolutely gorgeous. I know when the vehicle went back for the second redo, uh, they painted these, which I thought was a great idea. And lo and behold, right here, we have a 18 gallon fuelless, um, stainless fuel tank that's actually mounted to the trunk in the frame. And then the two metal compartments on each side were actually made um, with straps that adds total character. So I just think this was such a great idea. This is actually where the Optima Red Top battery is. There's a little feature here where you can actually connect it to a charger. But I just thought that this really, really was well thought out, putting it on both sides because they needed to make a compartment for the battery. And I just thought that was such a brilliant idea. It kind of reminds me a little bit of a European car with the luggage and so forth in the back. But this is where you actually fill it right here. Again, you'll notice all these bolts throughout are in stainless Allen heads, etc. And again, they brought that carpet from the inside to the back. When we look at the rear area here too, it's in absolutely beautiful condition. And watch how nicely this thing closes. Look at this. It closes like a safe. Turn this lever here and it locks. Absolutely beautiful. Making our way over to the passenger rear quarter. Again, the paintwork is phenomenal laser straight, all the edges are smoothed. Again, not one single imperfection to talk about. Brand new glass. Again, extremely beautiful body lines. There's those magnificent 20 inch wheels, brand new tires, brand new glass here as well. All the seals are super tight. Again, these lines are stunning. This is truly artwork is what this vehicle is. It could be on display strictly at an art museum and people would just gawk at how magnificent the design is. This vehicle is going to be almost 100 years old before we know it. Look at these wings again covering these vent windows. Again, the gap lines all the way down. I don't see any imperfections here to speak of. Same mirror on the passenger side that was on the driver's side. You'll notice this antenna on the passenger side here. They kept it real with that. Again, beautiful running boards. I already went over the interior, but I, I just want to show you one other thing that I did not mention. Check out that unit below, the heating, how they kept all that. What a great idea this was. This actually opens and closes like it did from the factory. Again, look at the shift boot. The craftsmanship in here is second to none. 
Just like on the driver's side, the door jams are super smooth. Just absolutely amazing. And look at how it shuts. Again, look at this. Oh, and you know what else I'll demonstrate again? Check out these windows. Look at how easily I rolled that up. And I'm right-handed, this is my left hand. Look how tight it rolled up. Look at this. Again, doesn't maybe seem like a big deal, it is. Vent window, same exact thing on this side, check this out. Opens up, closes really nice. It's not as loose as the window is to operate because you don't really use that as much, but it does function. Again, look how nice it closes. Barely put any pressure on that door to close it. And again, this beautiful engine compartment area with these vents is brand spanking new in appearance. We might have the tiniest little imperfection right there. Again, I'm being very, very fussy, but want to be as transparent as possible. Last but not least, check this out. Just like on the driver's side, look how easy this release is. It literally lifts up. That's all there is to it. Push this rod back, and there it is. It literally took me two seconds. There's no monkeying around. And again, look at how beautiful this engine bay is. Look at the overfill canister for the radiator. Look at this hose here, all sheathed beautifully. Look at the fit and finish. This looks like the manufacturer today just built this vehicle. Look at how everything was plumbed, all the air conditioning. You don't see zip ties in here. You don't see spark plug wires that are all uneven. You don't see any Mickey Mouse. We, we did a lot of, lot of nice little touches in here. And then Nick Ryan at uh, Killer Hot Rods and Customs, he did an amazing job installing this, making sure that everything was done correct. There's so much that goes into these LS swaps. And then of course, adding this air cleaner was like icing on the cake to a nostalgic look that it has. Check out the even the radiator cap here, the black cap. I mean, it just goes on and on. So anyway, uh, that's kind of an overview of the entire vehicle here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get inside the vehicle. I am going to touch base quickly on the undercarriage and then I'm gonna go ahead and start it and let you listen how beautiful it runs. So what I wanna do quickly before I start it is just go over the undercarriage of the vehicle. I am gonna again reference some of my notes here. Uh, so the undercarriage is extremely, extremely detailed. It is definitely mirror quality. Again, in my opinion, you can do a beautiful job on the exterior. A lot of guys will do a nice job on the interior. Uh, sometimes it gets sloppy in certain areas, the engine bay, what have you. This vehicle is the complete package. It is as detailed underneath as it is on the outside, the interior, the engine bay, etc. So definitely a mere quality undercarriage. The uh, floors and fenders were finished with the olive drab textured paint for durability. We do have a few photos uh, in our photo gallery uh, of the vehicle, what it looked like during the restoration process, and you will see how beautifully painted uh, the undercarriage was again. Uh, they kept a lot of that um, uh, in mind for driving purposes regarding the textured paint and so forth. The SRG chassis is sculpt uh, frame complete with their exclusive inner structure uh, trussing. It's fully boxed, back welded, ground, all body mounting, core support mounting, strong SRG member and portholes for the exhaust. The all frame components are CNC cut for accuracy. The SRG Force independent front suspension includes the front cross member in the frame, the framing, uh, Flaming River power rack and steering. This vehicle does have power rack and steering uh, as well. It's got SRG adjustable tubular upper and lower control arms. It's got Mustang spindles, stabilizer bar with energy suspension urethane bushings, and as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, strange engineering coilovers. The SRG Force rear suspension includes watch linkage lateral control, four link axle control, st uh, stabilizer bar with again the energy suspension urethane bushings, and strange engineering coilovers. It's equipped with a Willwood Dynamite big brake package front and rear, which includes the master cylinders that I showed you earlier, which look totally trick. Also the proportioning valve, 13 inch front rotors with six piston calipers and 13 inch rear rotors with four piston calipers. So as I mentioned again, the show board, 
the magazines, the engine build specs, the dyno sheet, miscellaneous receipts, and photos of the restoration are included. So that kind of ends the presentation here. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, although this was a long video, the intention of this video is not necessarily to showcase it, it's to sell it. So again, I apologize if it was a little bit long, a little bit tedious, but I need to make sure that people understand how magnificent of a car this is and exactly what features it has. Um, I'm sure I didn't mention probably 20, 30, 40 things about this. So again, visit our website at msclassiccars.com for a full description with, again, tons of highly detailed photos. If you have not signed up for our VIP email blast, please do so. We have thousands of people that follow us uh, with our email blast. Also, we'd ask that you like us and follow us on social media. We're on all the social media platforms. At MS Classic Cars, we are definitely not a big dealer. We're not a high volume dealer, but we are highly recognized in the collector car community as being a leader because of how we do things here. So please do your homework. And I will tell you that this vehicle is truly a top 10 favorite vehicle in my entire collecting automobile career. 700 vehicles that are all listed on our website sold page. That is a huge statement. Whoever buys this vehicle will be so happy with the way it looks, the way it runs, the way it drives. 636 horsepower, air conditioning, six-speed transmission, power steering. It's got disc brakes. It's got a custom chassis. What else could somebody possibly want in a 37 street rod? This thing is awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and start it. This is a cold start, by the way. So we're going to flip the key on here, let it cycle for a moment. Again, all you do is just flip the key with this thing. And again, this is a cold start. We normally start these vehicles, uh, run them outside for a few minutes, bring them in. I intentionally did not want to do this during this video. I wanted to start it cold so you can see how awesome it starts. So let's go ahead and do it, okay? That's it. That's a cold start. Goes to high I.O. like it should. It drops right down, just like music. Listen to this thing purr. I'm going to get on the gas pedal in a couple of minutes here. You got to make sure you listen to this baby run. It sure sounds awesome. Thanks again for watching. Rock and roll.